Oh, this is No Face Movement. I'm bringing you an article about uh, something scanning the Earth. They're talking about our airplanes and uh, satellites back in the 50s and 60s scanning the Earth. And I'm not quite sure if we had that kind of technology, but we'll see about I'll get into it. Um, I know a lot of you folks out there watch Ancient Aliens with all the mysterious pictures on the ground and stuff. And this is the link I can make. This is the same technology that looks like that they used back then as now. Alright folks, maybe the crop circles too, the designs. Alright, let's get into this article. Is someone scanning the earth? The mystery of the barcodes painted on the ground across the world. Car heart size patterns used to calibrate lenses on planes and satellites. Most built in the 50s and 60s of an unknown number of U.S. locations. They have become obsolete thanks to new digital imaging systems. These mysterious QR code-like patterns are painted across dozens of locations in the U.S. Although they look rather similar to something you might be shown by an optician, they are not God's equivalent to an eye test. They are meant for another kind of all-seeing eye. The car park size patterns are used to calibrate the lenses of high-powered aerial and satellite cameras of the kinds used by paranoid nations to keep an eye on their global rivals. That's one of them. Do you see the pattern? Right on top. It's located. This picture is described as a standard tri-bar test pattern off the runway at Walker Field, Maryland. These mysterious QR code-like patterns painted across dozens of locations in the U.S. are used to calibrate airborne and satellite cameras. And they're talking about the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. They put this here. Our folks, this is a technology that ain't ours that we took. And on ancient aliens, they're talking about some kind of thing looking from the sky. And they all and they said the all seeing eye. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Of obscure origin, it appears that most of them were put in place in the 50s and 60s, as the U.S. USSR superpower arms race led to unprecedented fears of mutual annihilation. Their existence has been highlighted by a recent newsletter by the U.S.-based Center for Land Use Interpretation, a group dedicated to researching human interaction with the Earth's surface. The calibration sites follow a general form established by the U.S. Air Force and NASA. The COUI notes. You see uh, a group dedicated to researching human interaction with the Earth's surface, right? That's pretty deep, right? What, do you, what do you think, Mystique? Um, well, you know, I, I have an opinion about uh, stamping on our Earth's surface that seems to be very large for mankind to do anyway. All right, let's move on. Consisting of a concrete pad measuring 78 feet by 53 feet, and coated in a heavy black and white paint. They are decorated with patterns consisting of parallel and perpendicular bars in 15 or so different sizes. This pattern, sometimes referred to as a 5-1 ratio aspect, tri-bar array, is similar to those used to determine the zoom resolution of microscopes, telescopes, cameras, and scanners. The targets function like an optician's eye chart, with the smallest group of bars discernible marking the limit of the resolution for the camera being tested, according to the COUI. All right. Oh, sorry. For aerial photography, it provides a platform to test, calibrate, and focus aerial cameras, traveling at different speeds and altitudes, the COUI adds. The targets can also be used in the same way by satellites. So you see, this is the old image. Hmm. And I'm looking at the new image, since this is the Air Force Base, but I don't see no runways nowhere. But this might be at the Air Force Base, because it's big land. Mm -hmm. But look at this new kind of pattern. Alright, it's hooked up to this. And then I see all these little white things in the bushes. You see them? Alright. And they look like these white things here. All right. And from afar, it looks like the interior of an electronic device. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It just depends on your perspective. And this is at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California. Mm. On the west coast, folks. In the Mojave Desert. As we move down, 
This is just weird. Look at this mm -hmm. one. It's not the same. It's a different pattern. It's one of those weird shapes. Like it nasty. Yep. Like it nasty. Mm -hmm. Like on ancient aliens. Alright. Yeah. It's different. Look how close it gets. You're telling me in the 50s and 60s. They had technology to look all the way like this now. For what reason would it have to be that small? Alright. I believe that we had the technology to do it too in the 50s and 60s, but I don't believe we introduced this kind of technology. But let's move on. California's Mojave Desert, a principal test location for U.S. surveillance aircraft like the SR-71 Blackbird and the U-2, and more recently unmanned drones, is a resolution test target hotspot. Mojave's Edward Air Force Base has the largest concentration of calibration targets of any spot in the U.S., with 15 running in a 20-mile line across the southeast side of the base. This allows a single test flight to test aircraft surveillance instruments on all the targets without having to change course or loop back. According to the CLUI, there is some variation in the size and shape of the targets at Edwards, suggesting updates and modifications for specific programs. A number of the targets there also have aircraft hulks next to them, added to provide additional realistic subjects for testing cameras. Some of these planes are themselves unusual and rare military jets, officially in the collection of the base museum, despite being left out on the range. And what's strange about that is that I could see drones testing this out. Because you would have to pinpoint someone, right? And it could pinpoint someone. But it's just weird that they have these kind of designs. Here's another one. There's a whole bunch across America. This is Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. Right, let's move on. The report goes on to detail several other military bases and NASA sites with testing grids of different styles and sizes, although it adds that the total number across the U.S. is unknown. Despite their ambiquity, it seems that the tri-bar photo targets are increasingly becoming obsolete thanks to the emergence of high-precision digital systems. The arrangement and spacing of the lines is not well suited for computer analysis. It's not a continuous single row, but two or three rows of pairs. And it has other frequency and modulation issues that make determining sharpness by digital means inaccurate, says the CLUI. The Air Force officially canceled MIL-STD-150A for photographic lenses in 2006 without replacement. All right, folks. And this is just one place they closed down, but we got a lot more places. And I believe a higher civilization could use this beyond digital. You got to think they're looking all the way from space. They would have to be digital nowadays, right? This is a Google map satellite looking at. And the ancient cultures and uh, older civilizations rely on symbols more often than not. They rely on symbols. People call them glyphs, runes, hieroglyphics, however you want to reference them, but they rely on symbols. And there has been some uh, research that indicates that um, angelic writings are was in symbols as well. So... Yeah, that's true. You know? And what people are calling aliens today are angels. Um, I want everyone to please rate, subscribe, comment, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Blogspot, Critterbox, Guy Like Production. Please subscribe to Mystique and Astrology and Astronomy channel. That's my secondary channel if anything happens to this channel. If you have any quotes, comments, or questions, please post it at the bottom. This is the movement. Move, move until next time. Please rate, subscribe, comment. Please be safe. Facing off.